Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will examine the question, is it true what Christians say about Hinduism? Lord Krishna's advice to Arjuna was immoral. The charge. We have already examined in another video the most common Christian attack against Lord Krishna that he was a libertine and found it to be vacuous. The sexual fantasies they weave about a prepudescent boy reflects more about their own inner worlds than the reality of Hindu lore. In the collections of charges against him, another one frequently made is that his advice to Arjuna to kill his relatives in the Kurukshetra war was sinful. Quote, in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna has eyes full of tears, expresses his own unwillingness to kill his relations and teachers in battle, his preceptors and friends. Krishna's reply was, cast off all this base weakness of heart and arise, O terror of foes, end quote. Christians see this advice to fight as morally problematic and the opposite of biblical teachings such as resist not evil and turn the other cheek. Christian author Preston observes with dismay, quote, I think the advice of Arjuna can be quite shocking to Westerners, both Christians and non-Christians, as we highly value physical life, end quote. A point supported by 2,000 years of Christian history in the West and the Hebrew scriptures account of the conquest of Canaan. The examination. Christians often have a tender conscience for violence when polemically useful. Given that their morality is taken from what they regard as the revealed divine word of the Bible, we should examine this work to weigh Lord Krishna's advice against what we find in the closest contemporary biblical sources to his period. This would be the Hebrew scriptures as this reflects Jehovah's moral standard as it is expressed in that particular era. Based upon the values of these documents, we shall determine if his advice was immoral from an Abrahamic perspective, or if the missionaries are simply engaging in moral polemics. Querying the Hindu scriptures, or excuse me, the Hebrew scriptures. The first question is to ask if there is any mandate in the Mosaic law which forbids the murder of kin in support of the accusation that this advice was particularly immoral. There is no law that specifically forbids killing of relatives under all circumstances. Actually, in the Mosaic Law, one is mandated to kill relatives under some circumstances. Quote, If your very own brother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife you love or your closest friend secretly entices you saying, let us go and worship other gods. Gods that neither knew nor your ancestors know, gods of the people around you, whether near or far, from one end of the land to the other. Just, just to be clear, do not yield to them or listen to them. Show them no pity. Do not spare them or shield them you are certainly to put them to death. And here's the important part here. Your hand must be the first in putting them to death. This is from Deuteronomy 13. Killing a relative in itself is fine with Jehovah under certain circumstances. Were the Christian moral assertion that Gopala is sinful for advising the slaughter of relatives in war sinful, then Jehovah is equally guilty of sin as he too advises the killing of relatives. In fact, it is a specific command that the relatives begin the execution. This is a second incident. 
excuse me, there is a second incident in the Hebrew scriptures that also vindicates Lord Krishna. In the Deuteronomic history, we find a character who acted to kill a relative closer than those to Arjuna, and he was not condemned as sinful. This is the son of David, Absalom. In the biblical account of 2 Samuel, his sister Tamar was raped by his half-brother Ammon. When he had the chance, Absalom killed him. Neither the author of the account nor any prophet, such as Nathan, condemned him for this action. While his father mourns his son, he too does not condemn Absalom. The killing of relatives was not an immoral act in the biblical system when it was justified. The advice was reasonable and just. <clears throat> Lord Krishna's advice was reasonable and just. The struggle between the Pandavas and the Karavas clans was a civil war. This was a conflict which was initiated by the Karavas and one that was inevitable after they rejected attempts by Gopala to negotiate a settlement. The field of Kurukshetra was a legally declared battlefield in a conflict between adult warriors. To criticize them simply because this represented a division of relatives would be the same as condemning the Americans who fought in our own civil war. Further, not only did the Karavas reject any negotiation to avoid bloodshed, but in the context of the Hindu legal tradition, they were felons due to a variety of illegal acts. The Karavas usurped power via fraud. They committed arson and various attempts of murder, such as poisoning. Swami Chinmayananda notes, quote, Active resistance to evil is the central idea in the doctrine expounded by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, end quote. It was completely morally legitimate for Arjuna to kill them and a failure to do so would have allowed evil to spread unresisted. The manner in which this is often framed by Christians, that it was a random murder of kin for some base vendetta, is simply false. As is unfortunately so often the case, they are either ignorant of the full story and repeat internet rumors, or, knowing better, they present it in a rather dishonest manner. So that concludes this video. Thank you very much.